Hello friends, this video on principles of inheritance part 29 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now does that mean that there would be no recombinants formed when linked genes are involved? So in so that way is if you talk like that, so wherever you have linked genes, they will only have the same traits being carried on the, to the next generation in the same way. So there is no question of having recombinants. But still, when we performed that experiment on of dihybrid cross by Morgan, we saw that there was some 1% of recombinants. So from where does that recombinant come into picture? Yes, even though the genes are linked, when the genes are linked, the more linked the genes are, the less possibility of having recombinants. So the more linked the genes are, the more possibility of having the same parental traits over the generation. But now that depends on how much linked are the genes, whether the links are, whether the genes are very much linked, they are like very close to each other and completely linked, or they are quite far and then they are not, they are linked, but they are not completely linked. So it depends. So that is why we will look at another experiment which was performed on sweet pea and the results from this experiment will actually tell you uh, the, the scenario where you get recombinants. It is not that you do not get recombinants if the genes are linked. So here you will see that the genes are linked but still you tend to get recombinants. So once we see that then we will try to analyze from how does that recombinant form. Now, when this experiment or this dihybrid cross was done in sweet pea, again, it is a dihybrid cross, so two traits needed to be considered. So, what were the two traits which were considered? Flower color and pollen shape. So, flower color, there are two possibilities. The flower color could be blue or the flower color could be red. So, blue being the dominant one is denoted by capital B and red is denoted by a small b. Similarly, for the pollen shape, the pollen shape could be round or the pollen shape could be long. So here long is the dominant one so denoted by capital L and round is the recessive allele so it is denoted by a small L. So these were the two traits which were considered. So what was done was heterozygous dominant was crossed with homozygous recessive. So basically it was a test cross. So whenever we perform a cross between a heterozygous and a homozygous recessive, that type of cross is called test cross. Why is it called test cross? Because it is generally used to determine the genotype of an unknown um, organism. For example, let us suppose in this case we know it is heterozygous, but had we not known this, if we cross it with homozygous recessive, we get to know if this is heterozygous dominant or it is homozygous dominant. Okay, so that is about test cross. So now let us see what happened here. So now as per the previous concept on linked genes and unlinked genes, what did we see? We saw that for linked genes, the dihybrid ratio should be 1 is to 1, that is 50% each. So let us see what happens in case of, in case of this. If, now there can be two possibilities. We don't know whether the genes are linked or they are unlinked. So let us first explore possibility 1 where we assume that the genes of the two traits are unlinked. So both the genes are not at all linked to each other. So they will show the principle of independent assortment. So they will assort independently. So what does what happens in this? So in this case the parental generation. What is the parental generation here? So as I said, a heterozygous dominant. So heterozygous dominant will be something like this. This will be crossed with a homozygous recessive. So homozygous recessive will be this. Now since here the genes are not at all linked, so th this capital B can combine with capital L, the capital B can also combine with small L and the same is true with small b. So this alone can produce four types of gametes and what are they? capital B, capital L, capital B, small L, small B, capital L and small B, small L. So this can produce four gametes. Whereas this can produce just one gamete that is BL. Right? So now these are the gametes which are being produced. Now when you have these gametes, now you can easily get the F1 generation. So what would be the F1 generation? So each of these can combine with this one. Right? So what would be the F1 generation? 
one option is BL, BL. The next option is BL, BL. Third option is BL, BL. And the fourth option is BL, BL. So these are the four types of offsprings that would be produced in this case. Right? Okay. So what about the phenotypes of these offspring? So if you talk about this one, this is going to be red and round. What about this one? This is again going to be red, but it is going to be long. What about this one? This is going to be blue, but it is going to be round. And finally, this one, this is going to be blue and long. So in this case, if you see four different types of phenotypes are being produced and these are their genotypes. So this is the result of the scenario when we assume that the genes are unlinked. Now let us explore the second possibility where we say that the genes of the two traits are completely linked. So the genes are completely linked. That means they will always remain together. So when I say completely linked, that means if this is one chromosome, this is B and this is L. So they are located on the same chromosome and they are completely linked to each other. So B and L will always be together. Similarly, B and L will always be together. So in this case, what will happen? Again, the same cross. So B, B, L, L crossed with the homozygous recessive. So in this case, the gametes which will get produced out of this, there will be only two gametes that is BL and BN because the other combinations are not possible as they are linked genes. In this case, there's just one gamete. So in this case, what were the various possibilities for offsprings? Just two possibilities, BL, BL or BL, BL. So this, what is the phenotype for this? This is going to be blue, long and this is going to be red and round. So now if you compare possibility 1 and possibility 2, what do you see? In possibility 1, what was, what was the parent? The parent was blue long and red round. So we had the parental traits in half of the cases. That is in 50% of the cases, we had the parental traits. And in the remaining 50% cases, we had new combinations or recombinations. In possibility 2, when the genes were completely linked, we saw that in 100% of the offsprings, we have the parental traits. So this is like parent, this is also like parent. So you do not have any recombinations. So in this case, there is no recombinations. In this case, there are 50% recombinations. So here, no recombinations. But please remember that both of these scenarios were just our assumptions. Now, we had to do a dihybrid cross. We just assumed that what will happen if the two genes are unlinked? What will happen if the genes for the two traits are completely linked? But what actually happens in reality when this cross was actually performed? What was the result? So let us look at the real result. So the results which were obtained in reality was that recombinants appeared. So recombinants were seen. So in our previous slide, where did we see the recombinants in possibility 1, where the genes were unlinked. So does that mean that the genes are unlinked in this case? Let us see. It was also observed that the parental and the recombinant types obtained were in the ratio 7 is to 1 is to 1 is to 7. Now this is a very different ratio because it shows that these two figures denote the parental types and this denotes the recombinant. So this shows that there are very few recombinants which are being formed and most of the outputs or most of the offsprings are of the parental type. So that means the real results which were obtained that is somewhere in between the possibility 1 and possibility 2. So as per us possibility 1 was unlinked genes. In unlinked genes we get recombinants but 50% of the almost 50, even if not completely 50% but a good amount of percentage are like recombinants. So if they are completely not linked in that case you actually end up having a good amount of recombinants but in this case the recombinants are very less. So in one way it is not linked but in some way it is it, it doesn't fall under the category of unlinked genes. If you look at possibility 2 where we say that they are linked genes in that case the parental types were more in the offsprings but there was no recombinants at all but here we have recombinants but very little recombinants. 
So that means this is somewhere midway in between the unlinked genes and completely linked genes. So from this it was, it was concluded that basically there are three options possible. One is unlinked genes where the genes are not at all linked to each other. So in that case they can independently assort themselves. So that is one option. The second option is completely linked genes. So the genes will be completely linked with each other. In that case there will be no recombinations. And the third option is incompletely linked. That means they are linked but not completely. So they are linked but still there will be some recombinations formed. Now how much recombinations will be formed? I mean how many how many recombinations will be there that will depend on the amount of linkage. So more the linkage is less recombinants will be. So we've got to see that these genes were neither unlinked nor they were completely linked and there came the concept of incomplete linkage. So it is also possible that genes are linked but they are not completely linked. So there is something in between unlinked and completely linked. And in case of incomplete linkage, you tend to see recombinations. Like if they are completely linked, you don't see much recombinations. But the weaker the linkage is, the more the recombinations you tend to see. So now the question would be, how are these recombinations formed? From where exactly the recombinations are coming up? And I'm sure you would like to know more about incomplete linkage as well. Thank you. Please visit www.examclear.com to watch more videos, attempt a free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.